This IHSA championship event is proudly presented by Country Companies and by Pepsi. The Reapers of Plano High sowed the seeds to victory in the state quarterfinals. A gutty performance by an injured Ryan McCoy and a buzzer beater in overtime by Brad Korn gave Plano the win over Carmi. They'll face Rock Falls Rockets and sharpshooting guard Brian Vance. Vance made him win it counted against Providence St. Mel. It'll be Rockets and Reapers next on Fox Sports Chicago. Continue playing in Peoria, the Illinois High School Association Boys Class A Basketball Finals. Our second semifinal of the afternoon pits the Reapers of Plano against the Rockets of Rock Falls. And welcome back to Carver Arena, along with Norm Van Leer, Mitch Robinson roams the sidelines. I'm Mike Lederman. Good to have you back with us. We saw something special in the first game. What will the second game bring? Well, between Plano and Rock Falls, we've already seen some good basketball in the quarterfinals. If you were with us yesterday, let's start out with Plano. This is a team 2 and 22 two years ago. And son of a gun, look at here. The top four in the top four teams in the state. Well, if you work at something and you work hard at it, you uh, end up getting good results. And that's what Plano has done. And Coach Scott Miller hey, has gotten his team uh, down here. He can very well be in the championship play if they can get a victory right now. Well, if they're going to get a victory, it'll be on the back of number 13, Brad Korn. Now, all Korn did was hit a buzzer beater in overtime, part of his 21-point package, and he is something special, a Division I player. Watch him here defensively. Well, no doubt about it. Division I is right there. When you can block shots and then shoot the ball like that, then you are definitely someone's dream of being on Division I team. All right, a happy bunch of Reapers. And you take a look at some of Korn's numbers, you know, 21.7 rebounds, hit that. Big winner in overtime and averages 10-1 rebounds and 25 points. So he averages a double-double. Over to Rock Falls. Hey, no slouches here. They're ranked fourth or fifth in the state. They knocked off St. Mel last night, a very strong and athletic St. Mel team, coming from seven points behind to do it, and they did it with a tremendous amount of balance. They didn't shoot particularly well, Norm, but Brian Vance was there when you needed him. Well, no doubt. He's a senior guard, and that uh, gives you leadership right there on this level. When it's time to hit the big one, buddy, you give me the ball, my eyes light up like big silver dollars. Of course, the young people are too uh, young to understand what silver dollars are about, but that's <laughs> what it's about. Getting the ball, prime time coming through. All right, there are Vance's numbers from last night. Meanwhile, he's got some work to do today. Patrolling the sidelines for our second game. Hey, Mitch Robinson is here without his bathrobe, but he's fully dressed <laughs> and wearing a smile. Hey, Mike, good to see you and Norm. Hey, Rock Falls took second place 41 years ago. And it was 1941, the last time Plano even won a district crown. Little coincidence? Who knows? Just thought I'd throw it out to you guys. Okay. <laughs> Mitch, always Natalie attired, and there's some oh, arts yeah. and crafts going on there on the Plano side. There's going to be a lot of that. We saw some of the most original decorations and costumes last night. We'll be back, starting lineups right here. Rockford's finest. Let's see. Notre Dame, Waterloo, Jibo. Jibo. 65 37. Unbelievable. Incredible. Fantastic. Amazing. Yeah. Well, that was them. What's that? No.
Welcome back to Carver Arena. I'm now with Plano head coach Scott Miller. And, uh, Coach, great game yesterday. Guy's going to play on that emotion, I would think. Absolutely. Uh, kids are real excited for the opportunity to play for the state championship on the last day of the season. And uh, uh, they got a lot of rest last night, believe it or not. And uh, I think we're going to be ready to go today. Everyone wants to know how Ryan McCoy's ankle is. It's feeling pretty good. He had some treatment this morning. And... Uh, and that was an uh, ankle that he broke in football, and he, he gets it twisted around sometimes, and uh, I think he's going to be okay. He's a warrior. All right, we'll talk to you at the half. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Mike, back to you. Okay, time for the starting lineups, and once again, let's go to the public address. Paul? Good evening and good afternoon, basketball fans. On behalf of the Illinois High School Association in the city of Peoria, welcome to America's original March Madness. This afternoon's Class A semifinal game in Carver Arena. Features the Plano Reapers, a record of 23 and 8, and the Rock Falls Rockets, 29 and 3. Let's meet the starting lineups. For Plano, that a forward, a 6'3 junior, 35, Justin Shimando. At a forward for Rock Falls, a 6'2 senior, 23, Jedediah Johnson. The other forward for the Reapers is 6'2", senior number five, Ryan McCoy. The other forward for the Rockets is 6'5", senior number 40, Herb Martin. The center for Plano is 6'9", senior 13, Brad Korn. The center for Rock Falls, a 6'6 sophomore, 33, Ryan Borjan. At a guard for the Reapers, a 5'11 senior, number 11, Roberto Flores. At a guard for the Rockets, a 5'11 senior, number 3, Brian Vance. To the guard for Plano, a 5'11 senior, 45, Kevin Jensen. Yeah. And the other guard for Rock Falls, a 5'9 sophomore, number 11, Jorge Acosta. The coach for Plano, Scott Miller, three years, his career there, 42 and 40. And the coach at Rock Falls, four years. We'll have the opening tip right here. Stay tuned. Coming up. Robinson here with Rock Falls head coach Tom Siegel and you, you've gone from rough season in four years to down here in the final four. How proud are you of these guys? Well I'm extremely proud. This is this year's seniors are the uh, first group to be with us for four years with our new staff and to see what they've been able to do for the school and communities I think has just been outstanding. How do you plan on stopping the big man Brad Korn? Well we've got Herb Martin who is about 6'5 that's a little closer to his size uh, and can go outside with him a little bit so we hope that uh, 
he's able to handle him. He's kind of been given that task this year two or three times against same type of players. So uh, hopefully we've been a little bit prepared for a guy like Brad Corm. He's an outstanding player. Well, good luck. We'll see you at the half. Best of luck to you, buddy. All right, thanks a lot. All right, Mike, back to you. Okay, Mitch, all set here. We'll find Rock Falls in the home white. And Plano, the visiting team here, designated. They'll be in the purple. Ray Alberts, Terry Elms, Don Fodor, the officials. That is uh, Albert with the ball, ready to throw it up. Herb Martin will jump against Corn, giving away four inches, at least. No surprise, Plano controls. This is Jorge Acosta, sophomore point guard. They put him into the lineup, and he runs this offense. Right down, they start with Corn. Good start, huh? Well, not a terrible a surprise there, but it's effective. Now watch the offense for Rock Falls. There's Vance. And uh, Plano's in their zone right now. 2-1-2 two, uh, two seems like with Plano with Corn uh, drifting around in the middle there. They'll bring Corn up at the point of a 1-2-2. Two, two. Well, goes into Borjan underneath to Martin. Well, that's a nice pass, nice ball movement on the part of Rock Falls. And they show a little pressure right now. Down it comes. This is McCoy, number five. Uh, he takes a flop on that ankle, and, and Acosta loses the ball out of bounds. Well, you just mentioned it's coach of Rock uh, Falls, Tom. Now, uh, let's take a look quick at the path to Peoria for Plano. Well, Bureau Valley, Spring Valley Hall, Forest, and a big win by three. And last night in overtime, Brad Korn with the buzzer beater to win over Carmine. Back to live action here, Plano with the ball. This is Roberto Flores. Kevin Jensen, he's their three-point shooter. And Rock Falls is in a man-to-man, -man and will stay there. And Herb Martin's uh, got the task of guarding Mr. Corn. And that's Brad at the top of the key. Flores starts his drive and tipped out by Rock Falls, so it'll stay Plano ball. Uh, Plano, that was their road, too. Rock Falls, by the way, again, they were a top-rated team, top five all year. Fulton, Galena, Farmington, and then again against a very athletic and much taller Providence St. Mel team coming from eight points back to go up. And here is the follow by Shimondo off the Jensen miss, and we get a foul underneath our first foul of the game. Well, you can see the replay, a little action underneath there. Everybody's going steady, going after the shot from the outside. No, no good. Here's the inside position, good. Little block by Martin, tipped up again. Oh, out of there, we, got... we have a foul called. Brian Bourjean, his first. Yeah. Jensen to inbound for Plano. Shamandel takes the pop. Martin skies for that rebound at 6'5". Oh, got up on that one. He looks very athletic, screen beam type, up and down the floor with the old-fashioned long socks on. That being Martin from Rock Falls. Yes, and Vance likes the right side, but he'll take it here. Oh, look at the follow by Acosta. I think Acosta was going with two hands. He might have had a uh, point there, but that was nonetheless a nice tip. Oh, he's only 5'9". I'm hearing you. <laughs> you can see the replay right here. Got a good running start on this position. Long jumper, three-pointer, miss, and he's went in. I'm, well, he had to go one hand. Underneath to Martin on a whistle again. A foul in the paint. And it will go against Rock Falls. Well, it's a tight game so far by the officials. And they call it on Acosta. His first for Jorge. I know it's a young age for these kids, but you have to make adjustments. It depends on how the officials are calling them. You better get ready for it. Jansen throws the home run ball. This is Corn. Corn's got the Van Horn look to him. Oh, long screen being and Red hair. You're right. All he needs is long socks. And a nine-figure contract, right? Yeah, eight. That'll work. <laughs> or maybe eight. What is it? I can be man. the agent. Corn underneath, and they wave it off. Right. Good call. Is he traveling? I'm going to tell you right now, Corn does not like the fact that Martin is bumping and pushing and, and, and somewhat a little whisper talking there. Yes, I saw a little conversation there. Kind right. of, you know, what'd you have for breakfast? How'd it feel? Yeah, yeah. You know, like Peoria? Yeah. How you like being here? You know. Well, Martin started uh, his high school career in Rock Falls and moved away for a couple of years to Sterling and moved back this year as a senior. And he has been obviously a key ingredient to the success of this club. Way out, oh, that is yeah. Jedediah Johnson. 
And they're not afraid to take that shot out there. They look for it and move the ball. Three-year starter had an interception as the uh, turnover caused by Martin Johnson again. Rebound Borgia. Oh, oh, it to Acosta. Between the legs action there. Here's Vance. I tell you, I like the activity that this Rock Falls team now shows. Martin looks inside. Beautiful to Borgia. A little bit of team play that showed in our first game we had today. Which, and again, oh, Plano loses it. A little, too, a little fancy. too fancy. A little too fancy again. Let's everybody hold up right now. Here comes McCoy. I don't think he's going to hold up. That's not in his vocabulary. Jensen likes it there. Oh, how did that come out? And now we going to hold underneath against Plano. Looks like Justin Shamandel. Shamandel, 6'3", 205-pound junior. Now, the, the one thing, Mike, that Rock Falls can't get caught up in the uh, hype of uh, things because they had some good operation and breaks, and they uh, let it get away from them. All right, Scott Miller talks to his team. There's Tom Sigel talking to his. Timeout on the floor. Rock Falls, the early lead, 7-2. Broadcast rights for this IHSA championship event have been granted to Fox Sports Chicago and Intersport Television by the Illinois High School Association. Any reproduction or rebroadcast without the express written consent of Fox Sports Chicago, Intersport Television, and the IHSA is prohibited. Dream the dream. That's what the Plano T-shirts say. Yeah. Hey, why shouldn't they? This is a team that nobody expected to be here. Well, except maybe a bunch of guys, a right. coach, and a bunch of parents. Well, right, confidence in themselves, most sports athletic uh, People do that. They have a way of having the confidence of doing things and achieving. And Plano has done just that. Rock Falls with a five-point lead. You got to talk to me about living in Plano. Yeah, you... fine, man. It's been nice, nice, quiet, hanging out. To have a reaper? <laughs> <laughs> Holy you, Mike. Holy you. Once again, Jedediah. <laughs> And we got a tie up here, and possession arrow will come down the other way to Plano. Well, you can see the possession as you walk right here, the outside shot taken. And they're not afraid, that being Rock Falls, to take the shot. But here you go, rebound. Everybody's tied up. Good critical whistle. Pressure Jump by Rock Falls on the defense. Meanwhile, Johnson started to have a one for eight game from the floor in the quarterfinals. He's already hit one today. Look inside, Shamandel blocked. Looks like Martin got him. Ooh. And another foul underneath. They are calling it tight. Don't they are very, official. very tight with their calls right here. Not letting the action get uh, too hectic out there. But once again, like I said maybe the ball players may be too young to make those adjustments. But you better get adjusted to that. But keep playing aggressive. That's all you have to do. Quick to Mitch. Like uh, look for Brad Corn to go up towards the top of the key and come around on some screens like he did last night. Hitting those shots nonstop last night. Back to you. Okay, first they've got to inbound the ball. Yes. Turnovers are not uh, good. You don't get shots when you have turnovers. Plano hasn't scored since 10 seconds into this ball game. There you look at Scott Miller, graduated from Illinois State in his 12th season. He's also the dean of students. Mm. Plano right now more turnovers than points. Four to two. And Acosta will run that offense. Uh, well, as I say that, he did have seven turnovers in the quarterfinal. Again, remember, he's a sophomore, very poised, but will occasionally do some sophomore things. Well, there's three sophomores, uh, actually, yeah, three sophomores in the block balls on it. Flores missing on the short jump. Here's Vance. 
Warren wisely not going too far with him. There's Vance inside. Oh, active. Martin, active. Keeping the ball alive until Corn comes down with it. Martin has a very quick jump release. He's up and down. Uh, very active on the boards right now, but no uh, results of points, though. Well, they went against the St. Mel team with LeVar Seals in a vertical of about 45 inches, and for the most part, stayed right with him. Well, he's active, I can tell you that. Costa misses that. Flores coming through. He looks underneath, and again, a turnover number five. Well, the bottom line is that the uh, Rock Falls have not taken advantage of this turnover. And you can see now that Brad Corn is coming out at the point of a 1 2 2. Well, I think Big Fellow has the versatility. That's Vance. And that's McCoy. Ball out of bounds to Plano. McCoy yesterday rolled his ankle twice, Ugh. came back and scored six critical points. You know, he just taped it up, walk it off. The old fashioned way. Well, I tell you, it was a pretty serious uh, situation because he had a break. Yes. Uh, as Mitch told us, uh, you know, from uh, Scott Miller, he broke it during football season. Mm. This is one tough kid. Young man. Okay. Plano. Corliss in five and a half minutes. Final two and a half of the first quarter. The Rock Falls is not added to that because they've been nope. stuck on seven for a little while. Both teams tight. Here's Jensen. A lot of action. A lot of action. Look under for Corn and Martin got in the way again. Vance. Oh, nice move. Right around Jensen. Oh, what a nice move, though. Man, a little crossover action underneath back. Went to the hoop and no call. Didn't finish it. With Johnson on him. Good defense by Rock Falls, though. There is a, is that Jensen. Jensen. Nice shot. Well. The coaches call him a basketball player trapped in a lineman's body. Well, that's, that's all right. <laughs> you see why? And answered right back with Acosta. Well, Rock Falls will take the three-pointer, and they have will not hesitate to take it. Ten to five, a minute 35. Here's Horn, and Horn dogged by Martin, and they call. Boy, both these guys, look out. Martin ended up in the cheerleaders. Well, I, I, I don't know. Quick whistles, I still say uh, that uh, foul. It's more of a touch foul. Well, there's two on Martin, and that that can hurt him. That yeah, can hurt him. You see this again. Doing a lot of jawing here. Yeah, but well, maybe that's why. But see, I didn't see the foul there personally. That's just the way I look at it. And uh, he has been jawing a little bit uh, as this game started. So maybe that is one reason the officials are being tough on the touch foul. Because I thought uh, of all the action I've seen, the play and the toughness and the Ability to be aggressive, uh, well, that'll take it away when you call fouls like that. Sean Hardy, number 44, comes in. Martin sits down with the two fouls. They get another foul here on uh, Eric Swanson, who just come in for Plano. They're consistent, I can say that. Well, you know, when you come down here, and then we discuss this a lot with the officials, you really do call them tight. Um, whether they call them well is something else, but in general they do. It but is you a know some type of basketball. As long as you're consistent, that's the main thing you have to adjust to, and the coaches will get your players to do that. Good point. 131 to go. Now we get a timeout on the floor here. I believe it was a 20. Was it a 20? Or was it a 20? I do believe it was a 20. Okay. Let's uh, give you an update of what's going to be the rest of the day and evening here on Fox Sports Chicago. After this game, we'll have the slam dunk championship. Then the dual team wrestling IHSA style will come your way at 3 o'clock. And then live tonight, starting with the consolation game at 6.30. And about 8.30, the Class A championship final here from the Carver Arena. It's a Dave Abrams. Uh, is he? He's doing that game. The Kaplan, lovely Dave Bennett Kaplan, Kaplan and Kaplan. I'm sorry. And I got two of, my, Kaplan. two of my favorite people in the world, Abrams and Kaplan, who are good buddies. Well, is that a law firm you're talking about? Well, they might as well. They're both lawyers. All right. You know that. <laughs> okay. Cappy has probably uh, about 15 uh, office pools from the games. <laughs> Said, I got it right, I got it right. Well, I thought David had three degrees and all were in Burns. Anyway, <laughs> a minute 25 and counting. Rock falls <laughs> to Vance underneath. Block steps. And they oh. call it a hell ball. Nicely done. All right, good defense on the part of Plano. It looked like, uh, I think it was Swanson got in there. All right, beautiful defense uh, to react to that. I thought it might have been uh, steps involved. So they lucked out and got this ball back. Hardy to Borjan. Here's Hardy coming in. Well, this corn man, he's 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 active. I like him. And a whistle, an offensive foul against Rock Falls. Well, that call was made, and 
The bottom line is there was a little help uh, by one of the Plano ball players. Tremendo, I think, was helping him before he tripped over. You see this? But you've watched the rest of the activity. Right he's, here. He's tripping and falling. He's holding him up. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that's, a, that's called helping out. I don't know. Yeah. I, that, to me, that's a two-point takedown. That should be in the dual team wrestling well, right there. helping out doesn't mean you're really kind about it. That's just said, Norm, as long as they're consistent. <laughs> that's all that counts. All right. But the foul was called before that took place. Final minute. Plano down by five. And a good rebound for Bourgeon. Whoa. And a little too good. But the foul right there looks like Shamandel again. Justin got into foul trouble in the quarterfinal, and here he is with two. That's what you call reaching right there. It almost took the head off. Oh, but Bojan. Whoa, oh, man. That's, oh, that was a good one. That was good thing he was standing still. Yeah, you get hyper, you get in energetic, you get going. You know, it's like controlled madness. You get pumped up, man. You got to go. Matt Alfredson, number 51, a 6'1", 200-pound junior comes in. A senior, rather, there is Matt, comes in for Plano. Plano's laden with seniors and juniors in this uh, basketball team. Four seniors starting, one junior, actually. Yeah. That junior just sat down. Shemando. Now, Rock Paul's going to let the clock run down the final minute. They lead it by five. And there is Jorge Acosta just listening to his coach. Brian Vance coming over. Setting up a play. Well, the three guards are closer to the coach than they are to the lane. <laughs> Insert your own fill in lines here. We're just telling it like it isn't right now. <laughs> Final 10 seconds. Acosta spreads the floor. Working on the bare ankle of McCoy. Johnson. Two seconds. Vance at the buzzer. Yes. What a great play. We called yeah. it, right? right? Beautiful. Well, they waited, they waited, they waited. 59.1 seconds. And at the buzzer, Brian Vance just shoots a dagger right into the Reapers. 13 to 5, an eight point lead. The Rockets fans are blasting off. And here it is. Oh, beautiful. Nice shot. Right amount of time. Welcome back, Carver Arena, 13 to 5. Start of the second quarter, Rock Falls in front and in the timeout at Rock Falls saying they're going to keep pushing Brad Corn around, bodying him up, and make him earn his points. So far, he hasn't been able to get off. Mike, Norm? There's a field goal situation. Plano, as you see, shooting only 20%. Rock Falls, just under 50. You know, I'm a firm believer, and Mitch just gave a report. When you do that, you got big people trying to get the ball, which is a good call in the knee. And this time, they're going to get a call against Sean 
for bodying on uh, Brad Corn. And you won't get to body or to play the defense underneath unless the people are doing the jobs on the wings and out in front in the guards. You have to do that by way of playing defense to make it difficult to pass in. Jensen has it deflected, but McCoy holds on. Jensen from three. Corn fights for the rebound. The scrum underneath, and immediately we get a held ball. Tom Sigel wanted a foul. Possession arrow goes to Rock Falls. There it is. You know, I, I've always said this, and I'll say it again. I just don't like that arrow possession. We were talking about this, Cappy and I, last night, and uh, how they changed the rule in college, so a defensive play, good defensive play, is rewarded here Absolutely. with the possession arrow. It, it still is penalized. Yeah, you know, you play good defense, you should be rewarded with the ball. Too many of the rules are for the offense. Johnson looked down low on the back door, but just a little bit too slow looking for Bourjan. Well, I tell you, Bourjan, if he had better hands, had a layup. Yeah. Because that was, a, uh, for under the conditions, not a bad pass. A good bounce pass behind him a little, but nonetheless, a good pass. And a five-second call here as Jensen could not inbound for Plano. I tell you, for the mistakes and the turnovers that uh, Plano is starting to build up here, Rock Falls does not take complete advantage of this in, uh, Extending that lead. 14 turnovers, 18 points. Acosta shovels it out to Vance. Oh! This guy's a real deal here, buddy. I mean, he has range way, way beyond the arc. Well, he was only four for 12 in the quarter, but toward the end, he made him when it counted. Yes. And there's a three-pointer situation coming at you. Two of those are Vance's. One from Acosta, one from Jedediah Johnson. This is how you spread the lead. You get a turnover and you hit a shot like he just did. That's how you extend the leads. You got to take advantage of turnovers in this game. 11 point margin, Plano down. Plano moving the ball nicely against the man to man. They're moving well, but they, they, they can't seem to get it into the man that's going to help them and get the points on the board. All year has been corn. So it's been some good defense perimeter wise for Rock Falls. 16 to 2 run here in the last nine minutes for the Rockets. Vance just quick release fire. He, he feels it. When you feel it, you get the man the ball when you feel it. Timeout, Plano. Ryan Vance, three threes. Yeah, those. Well, it's been a landslide so far, 19 to 5, a 14 point bulge over Plano. And here, the third of three in a row from three point range by number three, Ryan Vance. We'll see if the timeout negates uh, a decision to maybe pick him up a little bit because he's on a roll right now. And you know, I love the fact when they feed you the ball when you're hot. Plano again getting pressure from Rock Falls. It's time to get a foul once again, and we'll go against Sean Hardy. And Hardy, you know, they brought him in. He's a muscle guy, 6'4", close to 200. Well, if that's the game plan to come in and muscle and do things, and you're going to look for fouls because you're going to get them called if that's indeed what you're going to do. The Rangers are working so far. As right. long as they don't run out of players with fouls. There so you go. Yeah, Martin's going to come back. He's got two personals. 
So they're going to take turns beating up on Brad Coyne. And so far, uh, that's a good thing. Bourjan sits down. Brian Bourjan with a basket. Mm. Acosta's out of the ball game now. You see him on the bench. I think you're taking a chance with this lead to bring Martin in because that third foul. Well, change the play, the, uh, now it's the first <clears throat> point since uh, minute yeah. 52. You can take away the aggressive play with uh, three fouls. Just uh, you know, first half, six minutes. I mean, just start the third quarter, the second quarter. I'm sorry. Four for Corn. It's a 12-point lead. Here's Rock Falls again. And this time steps will be called. Well, he's picked up the top of the key a little better. That being Brian Vance. And the way he's shooting, you got to pick him up coming out of the locker room. Tom Sigel checking the old shoulder. Tom Sigel looks like Brooklyn. Does he? A little, a bit. little bit, yeah. A smaller okay. version. Hello, Miller. How you doing? Drop it. <laughs> all right, the double team. They got corn all bottled up down there. Once again, maybe some outside shooting will help get him free. Over three guys. Nice pass to get it inside. Among three guys. Six points for Corn. He scored four in a row here, and the lead is now down to ten. I love where he's playing defensively. It's the top of the zone. Well, that, that's worked, that worked real well. well. He's agile enough to do that, yeah. even with his height, but he has that Van Horn look, as I told you, that tall, thin, agile look. And don't forget, he's still going to grow into his body. He's at the high school senior. I'm, I'm telling you. Boy. See, that changed that shot outside. Underneath Martin this thing and corn the rebound. Now you work your way back in. Down 10 points. A couple hoops here on the hole. Plano is right back in this ball game. Flores gives it up. Again, they look down, trying to go over three players, and this time it did not work. Well, you got to have some outside, someone to hit a couple shots outside to kind of balance that off a little bit because you can't force it in there. The three or four guys. Once in a while to work, not too often, not the way Rock, Fowl, Rock Falls is playing this. Uh, Plano is going to substitute uh, Kevin Jensen. He's the guy they hope will do what Vance does on the other side, loosen the uh, game up and loosen the paint up with three. Hey, this is Johnson and Alfredson taking it away, or does he? And a foul. <laughs> against Plano as Hardy ended up with the ball and this time Hardy will be the recipient of a hole. McCorn was caught with the foul but he was uh, trying to plead a case that it is a jump ball after the body slam took place. Here you go. Good D right here. Lost the ball. Good hustle. Look at it. Try to get it in. Back out. There's the hole. And they call it on Corn. Acosta's going to come back in as soon as the horn sounds. Kelly Westcott comes out, did not score. Man to man, right now, Plano. And Acosta again gets instruction from Tom Siegel on the bench to Johnson. Jensen on Johnson. <laughs> Where's Olson? Looks down. Bourjan has it blocked nicely by McCoy. And again, held ball possession arrow to the purple. If the arrow went the other way, that would be a shame because Plano just played great defense to get a jump ball out of it. But All right, the arrow's in their favor this time. Again, the full court pressure. They don't guard the ball coming in. McCoy. Oh, tough shot. Now that is patented Ryan McCoy. He did that a couple of times in the third and fourth quarters last night. Again, coming off the bench with that ankle injury as Johnson answers from three. It seems like every time Plano gets a little run to get back in this, Rock Falls answers with something on the other end, mainly three-pointers. Well, you haven't seen Brad Corn yet. If he ever gets going, this game can turn around in a hurry. Oh, I'm sure it is. That's why I give credit to the Rock Falls defense for kind of getting him out of the game right now. And oh. Not to say he's not working hard to get in there, but that's when you rely on your teammates to do their job. We got Borjan in there bouncing, and we're going to get a call, and they're going to call Borjan for the foul. That is his second. Ray Albert, the official. Well, we see the play right here. See the little box out a little bit, trying to keep up with him over. 
All right, once again, I, I, yeah, it's high school. It's high school, and I'm just saying the touch foul. I don't see a meanness in the two teams mm -hmm. where you have to get in there and call fouls right away to slow everybody down. I just see some good aggressive basketball, and that was basically a, a touch foul. But you can change the course of the game and your approach by way, what you call it, as these officials won't let you get aggressive and remain aggressive, and they can change everything. Well, that was St. Mel's contention last night. Eight points. And they played against Rock Falls. Billy Garrett with some very uh, pointed comments. Mm -hmm. We get a blocking foul the other way as Borjan tries to move. Billy Garrett, uh, Shamandal gets his foul, and that's his third. So once again, Justin Shamandal's in trouble, and uh, they're going to send Andy Enoch in to replace him on the Plano side. Uh, Billy Garrett, by the way, if you were with us last night, collapsed after the game. Yes, I heard that. Uh, was taken to a hospital and is undergoing tests there. Uh, we hope he's all right. Apparently, uh, there was some family history there. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, seems to be under control. They leave this one up for Martin with a kind of uh, unorthodox alley-oop. And again, possession here on the whole ball. Well, I tell you this, the, uh, you see the whole operation of getting that play underway was there. Just the execution was not there because that lob was he Martin was open for a lob. Under advance oh. and Flores gets him, Roberto's first. But getting back to Billy Garrett again, our uh, hopes and our prayers are with him. Absolutely. And uh, we know regardless of the outcome of the game or however frustrated he was, uh, well, the, the emotions also helped uh, aggravate a medical condition and we certainly hope that he will be all right. Seems to be, so that's good news. This Brian Vance is a very strong kid, 5'11", uh, 165 pounds senior. 10 points. And I'm telling you, he's got some strength about him for his, you know, his size. And everything. Strong legs. When you shoot jump shot the way he does, way outside, you got strong pins, my friend. Uh, he can be the all-time yes. scorer at his school. I stole that uh, pins from my partner, Dougie Fresh. That being Doug Buffon. Pins. Uh, Nice pass to the corner. Just move the ball. Get your big man Corn open. Under three minutes to go here. You see it's an 11 point lead and a zone by Rock Falls all of a sudden. Underneath the Corn. Beautiful. That was just execution that time. Passing the ball even against the zone. He's got execution. Ten. He has 15. And Johnson, no. Well, too far underneath to call the charge, I would imagine. On that, he had position. That's, as you see here, a good baseline drive and that's not stopping anybody from being aggressive. Well, I think you have reason to argue at the same time uh, with that may have been a good no call, but you got to call something on contact. Well, it's the second foul on Brad Corn. Here's right. Jedediah Johnson, 70, 77% free throw shooter on the one and one. He's one of those wiry guys that being Corn that really, really get, is it, got a strength about him. Even though he looks so thin and frail, he's wiry. Three-year starter, he'll go to the line for his second after this timeout. Scott Miller talking to Kevin Jensen and company on the Plano side. They trailed by 10. Now, while we have a moment, let's uh, tell you about the IHSA website. One of my favorite places to channel surf. Believe it or not, Norm, it is probably as informative and as entertaining as any site you'll see. Most up-to-date information on your favorite Illinois high school team or athlete. Log on to the official IHSA web location, www.ihsa. Dot org. Our buddy Scott Johnson mans that thing along with his staff, and if there's a score to be had, it'll be there. Here's a young man who's there, Brad Corn, though has a problem here. He's got two fouls in the first half. Jedediah Johnson will be at the line for his second of two, looking for point number eight and a lead of 11. Got the numbers? Done. Where's Mr. Corn going to school? Because that's a plus for whomever. He is going to Southern Illinois. Southern. A Suzuki, huh? Uh, another Suzuki. And on the uh, girls' side, if you ever saw Molly McDowell play in the Class A Girls Championship, she's going down there, and she is one of the best players you'll see anywhere at any level. Jensen from three. Oh, is that a sweet touch. Let me tell you something. You get him started, get him involved, that'll open it up for you. And I'm telling you, Plano is still in this game, despite the fact that Rock Falls is getting ready to blow them out early in the first period. Vance, who had the hot hand before, missing badly there. Hustling for his own rebound. Acosta, remember? 
I'll go back to remind you some of those touch fouls we spoke upon has loosened it up on the defensive end have gone his own being rock with rock falls excuse me so it's opened up for Plano to get back involved in this game both coaches signal up on their feet why do they even have a seat for a coach yeah, that's true you know Jedediah from three Corn has Borjan to fight for the rebound, the and again, they the call Borjan. Well, he fouled him. He had his arm on that rebound right there, the inside position by Corn. A little dab of the ball. That's a good well, call by the official. Third for him, for Brian Borjan. And they're going to send Sean Hardy at 6-4 back in with three fouls. Now, well, credit uh, Plano for staying to their game and being consistent in their approach to what they're doing. I just think the foul calling has changed maybe their aggressive play that uh -huh. Mike Falls has had throughout this game to this point with a minute 31 seconds left in the second period here. Nice touch by Corn. He's got 11. Scott Miller will tell you, he said, all these other players have really put themselves second knowing that this is Brad Corn's team. He said, but any of them can star in their own right. Well, I have a feeling at this level they're going to have to prove it. Well, you got to step up when it's time to step up. Always somebody's going to be a direct. Uh, you know, benefit of someone's offense and uh, corn is that situation. But when it's time to step up when it's plan B, C, or whatever it is, you got to do the job. Acosta spreading the floor. We've got the final minute 15 here. The lead is now down to six. Acosta fires a three. Corn the rebound. Good call. And a push off on corn. That's three on him. Tough one, but a good call. I think he just. It's tough, but it's a good call. I think he just knocked. I think it was uh, Hardy right out of the way. Yeah, he manhandled him, right, matter of fact. Or was it Martin? Let's Sean see. Hardy, he just pushed him right on out of the way. Yeah. And you see right there, just, you know, put the arm out there, but tough call. Yeah. But once again, they've been consistent in their calls. Works both ways. Alfredson in. He's coming out. Yeah, but you better get him out. It's a minute and 12 yeah. seconds in, uh, before the half ends, and you don't want a fourth one by an accident. Brad Corn averages a double double, 25 points, 10 rebounds. It's a ball game now. Here's Sean Hardy. 61% free throw shooter, makes his first. Can't get much better than that from the line, either team. Back to eight points for a lead. A minute 12 to go and again that full court pressure where they don't guard the man taking out the ball. Jensen. Oh he thought about it. Well he did. All shooters think about That's it. That's right. He had that Reggie Theus look in his eye. Oh yeah. Or Bob Love. Right? Or Bob Love. Yeah. It wasn't shot butter didn't want to you know he took it. <laughs> but Reggie out here right by the bench with the camera in his face. Oh, yeah. Nobody else. No. Nobody else. Good D. Don't reach. Jensen in trouble. Flores has the uh, has the ball, but a foul as he goes down through. It could be Martin. And it's, who's the call on? Hey, Brian. I do. I think. Check who that last foul was on. It was uh, okay. It was on Jedediah Johnson. Oh, His okay. first. Scott Miller, a study and study. Did I hear you say Jeremiah Johnson? No, Jedediah Johnson. We're trying not to say oh. Jeremiah Johnson and no allusions to any <laughs> filmmakers or anything. Well, I, I'm, who was I, in that movie? Robert Redford. Of course. Okay. Yeah, up in that cold mountain area. Oh, man. Huh? Making me cold talking about it. Martin sits down again in the final minute. Try to keep him from picking up that extra foul. Both. All right. Got to make those. Got to make those. Matt Hardy. Sean's brother is in there, number 32. Well, you saw what happened at the end of the first quarter with less than a minute to go, and Acosta is setting it up the same way. Keep your eye on number three. He's over there to the right. Brian Vance. And there's your clock. Ticking, ticking, ticking. Jorge Acosta. Ready to go. This time it didn't work. Flores 
to beat him, and they call a block, and the foul, and the goal. Vance got in the way. Good move by Flores. Count it. Vance should have done a better job by just moving out of the way, letting him have a layup. Don't even chance. It. But you can't ask kids not to hustle and not to do something. As you see right here, anytime you get near to underneath that bucket, you never know what the officials may call. Oh, Vance touch. thought he had position there. Yes, he did. But it might have been wise just thinking, hey, all right, you stole it, you got it. Let you have the layup with 5.1 seconds left in this first half. Flores, two points on the day. Now goes back to the line. Makes his first out of three. And he loses it again. Well, Tom Sigel is upset, but Vance lost it. Right. Rock Falls is falling apart in his last uh, few minutes, few seconds of this. They're not making wise decisions. Let's put it that way. Four seconds to go. The starters come back in, including Corn and Shimano, each with three fouls. 4.3 seconds. But be very careful. You don't do anything that's uh, less than smart by way of getting fouls. Jensen right in front of us to take the ball out of bounds for Plano. Corn posts it low, or will. Tom Sigel calling his defense. 11-point lead, down to five. Four, three, here's Flores again. He'll go up. Oh, and at the buzzer, the ball actually meets the horn. <laughs> and a late rush by Plano has made a ball game here. Let's go over to Mitch Robinson. Thanks a lot, Mike. And, Coach, uh, I guess you have one thing you have to address the turnovers in the first half. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it was the jitters or... Uh, Lethargic play. I thought our passes were a little sloppy, a little lazy. Um, that's the thing we talked about at our timeouts. And I thought the second quarter we did a much better job putting uh, some zip on some of those passes. Ball fake, and they do a great job of shooting the passing lanes, and uh, hopefully we'll do a better job in the second half. Their plan was to body up on Brad Corn and May back by the way the refs are calling fouls here. They're getting a lot of, they're getting in trouble. Right, and uh, hopefully we can continue to go to the free throw line. Great, we'll see you in the second half. Good luck to you. Thanks. Mike, back to you. All right, Mitch. Scott Miller giving his opinion. We will be back here with halftime activities from the Carver Arena in Peoria. Welcome back to Carver Arena. Halftime of our semifinal game. You're watching the Jesse White Tumblers. I'm Mitch Robinson. Joining me now, Norbert Kessing, uh, the president of the Illinois High School Athletic Directors Association. It's a lot to get out. It's, obviously, it's a lot of job. Uh, how engrossing is the athletic director job? It's a very difficult job. You spend a lot of time away from your school, and you always have to go back and do your normal duties. What is on the agenda for you guys? What are you trying uh, changes, or what do you talk about uh, to maybe help improve what is already a great system in Illinois? Well, we, we try to work very closely with Dave Fry and the IHSA, and they're very helpful. We uh, have mentoring programs to help new athletic directors. We uh, 
also uh, are in helping to recruit new officials, which we need in the state of Illinois. You're down at New Athens. Uh, how's the program for you guys? Got to ask, are we going to see you up here next year? Well, we're going to be very young next year. We uh, lose our senior class, and we'll be starting probably all juniors next year. So we, we have a difficult road to get here when you have to play Nashville and Waterloo Jabot right. and on our regular schedule. All right, good luck to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank I appreciate it, Norbert. Stay with us. Halftime just rolling along. When we come back, Mike and Norm with some first half highlights. Halftime here in Peoria, the second semifinal, and the game has tightened up. Plano trailing now by five against the Rockets of Rock Falls. Norm, it seems as though each team has had a chance to show what it does well. You know, there's a lot of balance scoring on the Rock Falls side. They hit their threes. Six different players have scored. And then when Plano got going, Brad Korn was doing his thing, helped out by guys like Kevin Jensen and McCoy, who either bust through the lane or hit the outside well, shot. There's two uh, ways of thoughts uh, for me on that. I don't think uh, Rock Falls took advantage of some of the early turnovers uh, that uh, Plano gave, and I think they could have opened the game up, but they did. Plano stayed game to plan, and they did their job hitting the outside shot, as you see right That's here. Advanced, right? Oh, now. yeah. Three doing threes. It. But he did well in hitting that. But Plano stayed tight, uh, Mike, and they came in and Got some calls inside to go against the Rock Falls, and uh, hey, Corn took advantage of it and did his job. And I like the fact that Plano stayed on a steady pace right here. They didn't get shook up about anything, and maybe because of senior leadership, that uh, might be the reason. 28-23 at halftime. We'll have more here when we come back.
That's halftime celebrations, festivities, call it what you will. Our old friends of Jesse White Tumblers are out there on the floor now as that continues. The Rockets and the Reapers in the semifinal with Rock Falls leading by five. Statistically, Norm, really the big difference, those three-pointers that Brian Vance has hit three of and the Jedediah Johnson's hit a couple, and that's really about the story. Turnover's about even, assists certainly more for Rock Falls, and uh, they're also perfect in the free throw line. Yeah, no doubt about it. Like you mentioned, those three-point uh, shots by Vance. Uh, one thing I like about this game also, Mike, is the fact that they, both these teams have made some adjustments on whatever is going against them. And that, that's, a, that's a key right there when you can do it, especially on this level. It's a tremendous uh, asset. It's the first Final Four or Elite Eight for both. And they're trying to make the most of their opportunities. There's a look at the Jesse White Tumblers. What Chicago event would be complete without them? We'll be back. Teams back on the floor here at the Carver Arena. Rock Falls leading by five, 28-23. Let's go over to Mitch Robinson. He's got Tom Sigel with him. Thanks a lot, Mike and Coach. I uh, know you wanted the body up and, and be aggressive on Brad Corn the way the refs are calling. Though you foul trouble of concern for you? Well, a little bit. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of foul trouble inside, but part of that's from our, you know, our own fault because we start trying to wrestle in there instead of moving our feet. And uh, we, we got away from what we were trying to do earlier in the game with, with help, and we wanted to extend on guys that uh, we might want to make shoot it. So I thought we relaxed a little bit and got uh, content on offense, and, and we need to continue to attack there as well. Got to be real helpful the way Vance is hitting the outside shot, maybe open up that inside for Herb Martin. Well, if we can move the ball, uh, I think we can get guys in the perimeter that can knock down those shots, but they're extending a little bit, so we need to get our posts a little more active inside, try to get the ball inside some. All right, good luck in the second half. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Mike, Norm, back to you. I like what Tom Sigel had to say. We tried to wrestle with him instead of moving our feet. In other words, it's nobody's problem and nobody's fault but ours. That's exactly right because you've got to position yourself when you can't play the game of basketball. The minute you start using your arms and pushing around, officials going to call it a little tight, but that's the way it is right now. Leading scorers, Brad Korn leads all with a dozen, and Kevin Jensen with his two threes over on the Rock Falls side. Vance has got three threes, and Brian's got 11 points. Jedediah Johnson with a couple of threes has eight. And as we told you, Rock Falls has spread the wealth. Six players scored in the first half. Hey, the Rockets cheerleaders. Good times in Peoria, better believe it. And tonight, of course, one of these two teams will be playing for the state championship. Both will play. Consolation game gets underway at 6.30. We'll have that for you, too. 
Chicago Sun Times, the official newspaper of the IHSA State Championships. Remember to pick up your Chicago Sun Times for complete coverage of all Illinois high school sports. Okay. So second half coming up. Foul situation. Shimondo and Korn each with three for Plano. Two starters, especially Korn, a big loss there. Although Shimondo, you have to talk about him as being a tremendous impetus because he was hurt beginning of the year. He was out from Christmas till February. It was when he came back. He doesn't have big numbers, but he really helps that team's glue. And when Shimondo came back after February, this team really started to move. Over on the other side, Brian Bourjon with three fouls. Sean Hardy also off the bench with two points and three fouls. So the free throw situation, Norm's going to play a part here. Well, no doubt about it, but it'll be very interesting to see who picks up the tempo, get the momentum going, because Plano definitely had the swing of things uh, as the half ended. And there's more of the fact that Rock Falls kind of lost their poise a little bit. I say the last couple uh, right. minutes of the uh, first half. Right there's Brad Corn. He is unflappable, and uh, there it is. Dream the dream. Dream the dream. Later on today, the dual team wrestling, of course, at three o'clock. We'll have that for you just about oh an hour from now, maybe a little longer. The Class A Consolation Championship that all starts here live on Fox Sports Chicago at 6:30. Along with Norm Van Leer and Mitch Robinson, I'm Mike Lederman, Jim Corno Jr., our Fox Sports Chicago crew, doing yeoman work. Did you ever work with a yeoman? Uh, I, I visited him. Okay. <laughs> when you were on your farm in Plano. That's right. Norm <laughs> had a farm in Plano. Well, I was t uh, going to get a farm. Didn't really get it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now the truth comes out. Right. I looked at it, then I looked at Harvard, uh, further up north, but... Uh, Mm -hmm. Morning radio, I told you, took me away from that. Yeah, you just want to live <laughs> as close to Belmont as you can. Absolutely. All right, back underway. Plano in the purple. Rock Falls in the white home uniforms. McCoy underneath. Nice play, nice move, and uh, right away Plano comes out firing, and they've made a game out of this big time. Ryan McCoy has brought his team to within three. They were down as much as 11. Jedediah Johnson fires glass, and the foul underneath, crashing the boards, and Johnson will get his foul, his second. Shot that a little too hard. He had a leaner going in, had a soft touch. He might have made that, committed the foul on top of it after missing the shot. Johnson, oh, does that happen, Mike? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh, buddy. You're a better one to tell me, I tell you. Jensen again having a problem, and do they get a timeout in time? Yes. yes. Remember, once the official counts to four, he's not going to let you call a timeout. That five is going to come down, but here, he made it in time. I never understood that. That you still got five seconds to get it in by the rule. If it's four, why couldn't I be able to, should be able to call timeout? It makes so much sense. I mean, yeah, five seconds is a rule to get an in. Right. Well, let's work. Well, I think the, the feeling is it has to touch somebody in five seconds. Well, then they take the rule as such. Uh, so the ball. They, in they the always air. tell you you have five seconds to get right. the ball in. They whistle the ball in the air. Yeah. Then they then they call well, that probably be too much for at, people to understand. At four seconds, I don't know why I couldn't still call timeout. Okay. Yeah, that's all. Let's work on the possession rule first. <laughs> all right, IHSA Sportsnet. It is your ticket to all the action. Tom Waddle is going to bring it to you every week. All the prep action from the week from the Illinois High School Association events. Tune in here on Fox Sports Chicago. It's IHSA Sportsnet. You'll see it Sunday at 11 a.m. Reaper fans, Reaper huddle. Let's listen in to Scott Miller. Okay. Scandal, you got luck to go deep. You may have to come back right here. We need to, okay? We need to set a good double here. Good job. Okay, Ryan, then you're going to stand there. Grant's curling off you. You're going this way. You may have to come back in the middle. We've got Rob, Robert coming over here. we got Grant there. Okay. Uh-huh. Problems with inbounding the ball. There you look at the Rock Falls bench. Tom Sigel in his fourth year came out of Knox College to lead the green and black. Rock Falls, the school last year in 1958. They played for the championship, but were part of history as Marshall won the first public league school to win the wow. Illinois State Championship back 1958. I was 11 years old. I was uh, about that. Yeah. About that. I was, I was 13. I was 11 and trying to learn what it was about to. Yeah. 
Dribble basketball in Western Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> All right. Nice move. Beautiful move. All of a sudden, that you, know, you can feel this corn getting ready to take over. And that's 14 for Brad. You can feel the heat, buddy. And it's a one point ball game. Vance, they've been clamping on him since he hit those three threes. And a kick ball. Rock Falls leading by as many as 11. You're looking there at Herb Martin, senior starter, number 40. 6 5 forward, six rebounds in the quarterfinal. Yeah. Now, I told you earlier, when some of those tight calls were made, it was going to change the aggressive play of Rock Falls, but their coach seems to think it's just they just didn't move their feet and uh, move their bodies. Jensen got a hand on it, causing the turnover. Here's McCoy, bad ankle and all. Oh. He loves that move. Yes, he does. Johnson back for Rock Falls. 6.45 to go, third quarter. Acosta, the sophomore point guard. Man to man. And the shuffle by Vance. Good call. That was a step. That was called traveling. They're out of sync. I'm telling you, Rock Falls is out of sync, and Plano's just coming right up and taking advantage of it. And they've been out of sync since three minutes left on the first half. 12 turnovers for Rock Falls, nine for Plano. Flores with Acosta guarding him. Down the corn. And Martin sends it right back, but look at Shimando. Good team effort at time. First points for Justin Shimando. Oh, nice and play. Right back. Vance just, just he got on a fast break. You look up and he's landed up in a good strong move to get the two points. 13 for him. Six minutes gone. The six minutes to go. And Horn is fouled by Martin. That'll be the third on her. And Coach uh, Tom Sigel was talking play. about don't reach, no foul. And immediately here it is. I mean, he wants to reach in. There's no need for this. The pass in, there's no need for that at that far out. You're reaching in. You got to move your body around. Live there. action. Jedediah Johnson went down, no call. And they look for corn this time up high. Man, I'm telling you, you're right about this young man. He's got the room to operate now, and he is operating. You know when I was wrong, Norm? I picked the Braves in 58. You picked the Braves? I did. Uh-huh. Only time I was wrong. Was that uh, Wes McCovey? Yeah. Wes uh, West Covington? Wes Covington. And Billy Bruton. Aaron, Johnny Logan. Yeah. Eddie Matthews. Uh, for anybody who knows what we're talking about, you're not missing anything. Baseball okay. at his best. Who they lose to? The Yankees? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. They had beaten them the year before. Two years later, the Pirates beat them. The yes, Yankees, sir. that is. That's right. You're probably sitting, jumping up and down when Mazeroski hit that home run. Just walked in the house and Ralph Terry gave up the gopher ball. First time my parents ever heard me say a bad word. I was a Yankee. <laughs> nice play. Borjan. Borjan, nice feed in. They needed that, that being Rock Falls. And all over defense. And the foul again. And Mr. Vance had better watch himself. Yes, he better. He's starting to give the official the look, throw the ball away a little heavy. And he also is talking to the crowd. It's a no-no. Here's this. He put the leg out there. Come on. Come on. You know it. Can't put the leg out there like that. Try to trip the stallion. And I tell you what, watch for another call that's going to be tight go against him just because of the lip service given to the official. Mark my word. Flores looks down. McCoy nice. underneath. Beautiful oh. entry pass and a foul before the shot. Again, that norm in the NBA, of course, is continuation. Right. Well, Plano would uh, not have liked to have seen that call because that was a great pass for a layup. Look at this pass right here. Boom, underneath by himself. Little reach. Good call because he got him before he even got possession of the ball. Jedediah Johnson's third foul. We have timeout on the floor. Just under five minutes to go. Rock falls. Leading, but only by one.
Braghorn. Guys, welcome back. And you notice how, how agile Brad Korn is. Well, as a freshman, he was 5'10", point guard for the team. Sophomore year, he was 6'6", never lost his speed or agility. Not bad. Back to you. Wow. <laughs> That's a growth spurt. 5'10", wow. 16 points. Oh, man. That's a quick growth, isn't it? Five for six from the floor. Two, four, six. Free throws. At a six. And three bounds. Kind of to win bound here. They can get the lead. Corn missing that one. Had to change the shot in midair. 4.50 to go, third quarter. Tom Sigal shouting out an offense. From the Rock Falls bench. This is Vance, and we get a foul off the ball. And it looks like Flores with the push. Well, I tell you, Mike, what the Rock Falls need to do is settle down, especially one being Brian Vance, to let the shot come to him. Don't force it too much. Settle down in the offense. Timeout came at a good time for Vance. Martin wide open, knocked away by Corn, but there's Borjan. Borjan right there on the spot. Johnny be good, and he was right there after Martin uh, had it deflected away from him. Good inbounding by Plano, getting the ball right down the floor without the ball hitting the ground. And we get a call here, Flores. Little delayed, but nonetheless the call. Good defense anticipation on that pass entry and caused the turnover. In my opinion, it really means nothing unless you take advantage of it on this end. Three-point lead for Rock Falls. Not that time for Vance. Turnover's just about even. There's your three-point ball game. Jensen from three. McCoy trying to deflect it and does. Keeps possession for Plano. Martin hit it out, but uh, he got up in the air, but hit it out. Couldn't control it. Look at the difference, Norman. Points in the paint. Of course, you could spell that K-O-R-N. Well, no doubt about it. And it's popping right now. <laughs> Took you a while. Talk about a delayed reaction, man. That was... <laughs> Jensen again. Short again, McCoy. Yeah, can't save it. Jensen just a tad out too far. I think he slide in a little more in those passes because absolutely no one's on him on the shift and the swing when that ball comes in his direction. Well, Plano trailed by as many as 14 points, 19 to 5. Well, I thought Plano I thought they were going to get blown out way this game started, but they've maintained their cool and uh, got back into this ball game by just being steady. Got within one, now it's three. Herb Martin dropping the key. Good boxing out by Plano. Good open shot looks by Rock Falls. They're just not falling right now. And there's your six foot nine inch point guard. Well, that's, that's an asset for him. Commando. That's not a bad move. Put him outside as far as I'm concerned. Inside, outside, come up, bring the ball up. Then he gets that zone underneath against him. Justin, second basket of the quarter. Vance has Corn just stuff it. McCoy oh, ahead of the pass. field, Acosta with it. Beautiful play by McCoy. Well, I can tell you right now, I'll say it again, I think Vance is just still too aggressive on the offense as opposed to letting the offense come to him. And it's going to hurt the team if you don't make that adjustment. Plano has taken the lead by one. McCoy with the left hand, fighting off the defender and curling the ball in. Johnson. I think this is the first lead for Plano other than the opening tip. Acosta, and they call the offensive foul. No doubt about that one. Jorge Acosta coming through. Katie barred the door, and Katie just fell down. <laughs> I am really uh, loving this game that Corn has brought to the table here. Just a steady performance. Just get all excited, been out of shape. There he is. From three. Now Shamando to follow. Well, if that one had gone down, this place would have gone. Now, let's look at the Martin Sky. Oh, what a play. Shot. Turned into the defense. He still made it. 
You know, I'm looking for Steve Martin to open up a little bit defensively, I mean, offensively, and see if they can get the ball to him, let him get in the flow, because I see some skills there. Only averages about six points a game. They look to Johnson and Vance for the shooting. Here's Corn with the turnaround. Good hand in the face by Martin. Tough shot, but nonetheless, good one. Flores and Acosta, and this time the foul will go on Flores. That's three on Roberto. They can see a little bounce back in the step of the Rock Falls team. And they seem to get a little more confidence in what they're doing. A minute 44 to go third quarter. What a good game. Swanson comes in for Plano, and McCoy comes out with six points, four in this quarter. It's like a boxing match. Uh, a lot of good jabs yeah. thrown. No one's thrown the knockout punch yet, but a lot of good jabs. Speaking of that, it was a good fight tonight. I forgot about it. That's right. Lewis Holyfield. Yeah, man. Oh, he's open. Nice move. For Sean. That was a nice uh, look and a nice pass by Acosta. I mean, that was just a nice, good set play. That's what they need to do. That's the end of the quarter for Bourgeois as Korn trying to hold on to the possession. And they call it a turnover. He lost it going down in the dribble. Good aggressive defense. Like I said, I see a little more of a step back in the Rock Falls uh, team. And you'll see it right here. His possession. He's got it. And he lost it. He just lost it. Good call. Another turnover for Plano. Here's Borjan. Johnson pops free. Nice shot. Now, I got to say this. I don't want to pick on the kid, but the offense has gotten a lot smoother since Vance has settled down and played and get back in within the system. A run for Rock Falls. Seven points, and they lead it now by six. Final minute coming up here in the third quarter. You can just feel this building lift with energy as this quarter has really done a job. Corn fighting oh. three, four, five oh, people. Oh, I tell you, if he wasn't so thin, he wouldn't have squeezed through the two defenders, <laughs> missed a shot, and then tipped it in. It's got that Mickey Johnson look. To oh, him. yeah. Oh, what Mickey. did Johnny Kerr say about Mickey Johnson? The only college he would go to would be Cole, because that's the only one that would fit a shirt across his chest. <laughs> that's a good way to put it. He was a thin guy that lasted about 15 years. That's right. NBA. That's right. And Mickey's still around the Chicago area. I think he's he's a sheriff. Recently, right? He's, he's a, a sheriff in Oak Park. I have to stay away from Mickey. I don't want him to arrest me. Okay. <laughs> For not giving him the ball, probably. Uh -huh. There's your tick down. The four-point lead. Acosta shouting signals. The one-two-two zone for Plano with Red Corn at the point. Like a tall Opie, huh? Who you bet? I called him Big Boy. Oh my goodness! Look at her, Martin. That's what I said before. I think you need to get him involved in the offense. Well, Martin has come alive here. Yeah. Four points in a quarter. You watch Count this. The uh, watch this play, Mike. Down low, long distance look from the camera, but man, he go to work on it. Reverse, spun in. I don't know how he banked that shot. He was so far to the right of the bucket. I believe they called the foul on Shamando. Yeah. And for Justin, that's four. Well, I tell you what, that was more one of his quiet fouls because the other fouls he's had has been some football linebacker bucket style yeah. fouls. <laughs> well, Martin. An adventure at the free throw line shoots 44 percent. Well, <laughs> trying for a three-point play here. I can see that. At the buzzer. Okay, we got a ball game. 43-37. Rock Falls with a spurt after Plano nearly caught up. So we'll go to commercial here. We'll be back with quarter number four, the semifinal number two here. Madness continues and it's getting madder and madder as we get deeper into the day. Norm Van Leer and Mitch Robinson alongside. I'm Mike Lederman, Jim Corno Jr., a Fox Sports Chicago crew. Hope you're enjoying this as Plano and Rock Falls dueling for a chance to make it to the state title game. Here in Class A in Peoria, the Plano cheerleaders. The motto, dream the dream. As we start the fourth quarter, leading by six, Rock Falls with the ball. 
Vance has been quiet offensively. Martin has had an explosion of sorts. And uh, Plano's in a man to man right now. Rock Falls, look at that percentage in the third quarter. Seven for 11 from the floor. Johnson. And he loses it to Flores. Looking down for McCoy. That's good defense. Excellent defense. Out of bounds, that was good defense. And the ball hit Costa as he was out of bounds after he deflected that ball. But uh, you see the nice uh, spin move. Beautiful pass. Let him just right. Try to hip it. Didn't get it. Good hands by Costa. Ooh, okay. Hit him as he was out of bounds. Referees on top of that, and the officials, I should say. Flores at the top. McCoy, 18 feet. Not a real good shot for Ryan, the real McCoy. If you're old as I am, you remember a show called The Real McCoy. I know people confuse you with Walter Brennan. Walter Brennan. <laughs> I love that show. Who's the guy that confused you with? I don't want to ask. McKinney. I know. Okay. He got the shot. Didn't take it. That's working. Uh, against McCoy. They clear out his side. Here's Acosta. They'll screen it down low. There's a man coming up. This Johnson. Woo! I tell you what. That was an excellent play. And patience on the part of Rock Falls to get that shot. And I'm telling you right now, Johnson is uh, looking pretty good in that outside shot. Fourth three pointer for Jedediah Johnson. The credit the coach for allowing him to have the patience. Look at Brad Corn, and Martin's got him. And for Herb, that's foul number four. Well, he earned that one. He got his money's worth. Yes, he did. Tom Sigel just in front of us, yelling at his team to reverse the ball. Well, that was good play right there with Plano moving the ball and Mr. Corn coming over underneath the bucket and uh, getting position to get that shot. See, that's where you have to play defense first, not allow a guy like this of this caliber to at least roam over. If you're going to get a foul, you might as well get one holding him off from going to the spot to receive the basketball. I'd much rather see a foul like that than another get the ball and then turn around fouling and going to the hoop. Martin comes out. Sean Hardy comes in. I got. Corn for 19. And Martin was playing so well on the offensive end of this game, and uh, not you know, playing some good defense, but that's a case where you got to play the D before the man gets the ball. 20 for Brad Corn now. And he's done it in a nice, deliberate, patient way. Lead is seven. 46 39. Block down to the six minute mark. Johnson with a beautiful touch he's had. Vance. That's a shot. That's the patience he's needed to have to get the shot. That was a tough shot on top of it. That's why they say all state after his name. No doubt about it. But what I like about it, he showed the patience to get back into his offense thus far because he was starting to get a little out of sync there going one on one. Offensive foul there on Kevin Jensen and here points number 14, 15 and 16 for Brian Vance. Man, man, good patience right there in this long distance jump shot. And then on the other end, Plano has a turnover by having an offensive foul called against him. Now, if Rock Falls can take advantage of this, that is a huge turnabout and turnaround in this game where in the second this last period that play, Plano went up one, one point. Look at those threes falling for Rock Falls. No doubt. Cascading for Rock Falls. And they're working on it. I mean, they're moving the ball to set up to get that shot. Jensen comes out, Andy Enoch is in for Plano. Here's Jedediah. Oh, man. Unconscious. He's unconscious. One, two, three, four, five for him. Unconscious. The gap is widening. 52-39. Trying to answer was out for No way, no how. I said the step was picked back up by Rock, uh, Rock Falls. They're a lot more aggressive than they were one period ago. Plano went into their catch-up routine in the third quarter. Got within one. Well, they went up one. Since one, uh, yeah, got got up one. Yeah. Since then, it's been all Rock Rockets. Johnson wants a timeout and takes a 20. Good call. He was getting ready to check at this point in the game. You guys will use it at 4:48. In this final period here. And not ever to lose the ball. You get a timeout. Just keep in uh, possession. 
Well, both these teams are in their first semifinal. Well, let's take it back. Their first semifinal in 40 some years. Well, that's for Plano, it's their first semifinal. As we told you, with a young team two years ago, the record for Scott Miller was 2 and 22. Three years ago, Tom Siegel was 5 and 20. Wow. There's Miller. And uh, looks like Norman Felt. Oh, yeah, for sure. Sure does. Okay, we've got lots more to come at you here. IHSA events all through the day. We've got the dual team wrestling at 3 o'clock. We're grappling and groveling. And then starting at 6.30, we'll finish this tournament with the consolation game followed by the Class A championship. We'll have that all for you here live on Park Sports Chicago. Will the Rockets rule? Well, right now, they're on the launching pad. And they've opened up a 13-point lead. A little low in the pass, but you had a nice penetration pass. The cost are a little low in that pass. Possession arrow points in favor of Plano. We got a timeout here officially. 4:36 to go. There's your situation. 52-39. All right, they're mopping the floor. Rock Falls is starting to mop the floor with the opposition. We'll see if Plano can come back. Johnson got three of them in Vanska. Yeah. Welcome back, fourth quarter, 52-39 Rock Falls. Hey, when the action's over here in this game, don't go away because we have the Pepsi Slam Dunk King of the Hill contest. The winner of that will take on next week's 2A Slam Dunk champion. Mike, Norm, back to you. A statistic we haven't hit you with, and it's an interesting one because Jorge Acosta, the sophomore point guard, 10 assists. Oh, yeah. Well, he's also got seven turnovers, but we'll not talk about that. Well, yeah, we'd have 11 if that ball wasn't thrown a tad low for a turnover, and the possession arrow went to Plano at that particular time. And it's here, and this official's timeout as we get back into the action. Johnson, 17 points, Vance, 16, leading Rock Falls. Corn with 20. Top man for Plano and in the ball game. Every trip down's got to count now for the Reapers. Corn behind the screen from three. A little too far out for that shot right there, but uh, oh, he had an open look. Yeah, he had about 25 look. feet. That's way out there. But, uh, one thing about it, he's going inside and outside, and they got to come on with it right now. Plano keeps possession. Flores. Calling the offense. This time, Corn again. Again, the heel of the rim. And again, McCoy with the rebound. Here's Jensen from NBA land. Ooh, nice shot. <laughs> Big set up, and that was long distance. Nine points, all on threes for Kevin Jensen. And he got the pressure. He got the pressure. Vance trying to dribble through it. McCoy McCoy for his first foul. Well, you see the three. As we get ready to look right here, you got a rebound out, and I'm telling you, you're right. That's NBA land. My, my, that's horse land. Dad, I tell you though, if you got to shoot a three way out, the top of the key is the best place to do it. That's true. That's true. Okay, that's really true. I know how tough it is on the side. The side is way out there. That angle is just too deep. Now. You get a better look. No help. Top. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Casting floor is going at each other, Johnson. And the scrum, the rock, falls. rock Falls ball. I got to tell you this, I, I think uh, on both accounts and both teams, they made fine adjustments as towards uh, how the officials were calling the game. And credit to both coaches for getting their team prepped and ready to go for that. 
for Plano. Corn and Shimondo have all but two points for their team in the second half. And of course, you've got to run it. Rock Falls, a 10 point lead the ball. Johnson. Through. Hello. I tell okay. you, a good job of stopping, spreading the legs, and hitting a shot as a foot. Dr. Cerny avoided a charge if he had continued. That was a big shot. And this kid has come up with some big, big shots. And that's what Johnson, as I speak, about Rock Falls. His first non three point basket tonight well, gives him 19 for the game. He didn't know how to act. He was too close to the hoop. Yeah. Had that little Dick Barnett look, too, with the legs yeah, tucked under, a little fall back, baby. Now we're aging ourselves, buddy. I love it, though, Norm. I do, too. <laughs> nice it's move. Prime. Look on. Oh, spin, move, jockeying his way to the paint. 22 for Brad. That's smart play on Vance. Still smart a play. Point bulge under three minutes here. Smart play. Didn't go to the hoop, and I think early in the first part of this game, he would have tried to score from there. Smart play on Brian Vance. Bates and McCoy, a couple of tough young men. Oh, nice little move. Al McCoy is playing on that ankle. Boy, that's a story in itself. Right. Broke it in football. Got a move. Family last night. He's still going. Full steam. And a deliberate foul, and then they call an intentional foul right. as far as took down Acosta, I think, even a little harder than he anticipated. And that is a curl for Plano. Acosta reminds me, so here's a play right here. A little swing action. Got him. But Acosta, what I was getting ready to mention is the fact he reminds me so much of Walt Frazier in that he just shows no emotion out on the court. Just very cool about everything. And I don't like people like that because I like to see emotion and let me know what you're doing. See, I have to keep guessing when you're not making any expressions. So we'll have two and the ball. Acosta now with four points to go with his 10 assists. Hey, you go. Ten assists. Uh, what a great uh, contribution he's added to his team by handling the ball when he's out there. Well, you know, again, you've got two sophomores and three seniors make up this team: Borjan and Acosta, the sophs. Absolutely. And here comes Martin. Now they can bring him back with 2:24 to go, and he's got four fouls. Andy Enoch comes in, put a little height in there, six-three for Plano, and Jensen comes out. They've got to get the boards. And Sean Hardy comes out for Rock Falls. Did a nice job. Seven was in there. Two points on two free throws. And three personal fouls helped this cost too. Right. I think the coach did a nice job in their substitution with the fouls that were. Oh, these are two really smart coaches. I just would love to watch these guys work. You can say by the team, the reflection of what they're doing. Horn commits the foul. That'll be his fourth. Now we're at 2.15. Winner gets to go against Jibo High School of Waterloo. And the way they played today with a little extra rest. Mm, and tough. John Thomas and company, that's going to be one you're going to want to see. Well, I don't want to question the longest running March Madness show in, on earth, but that to me is a tough grind. Well, that's, two games you know, that, that's that's part of the challenge, I guess. The I guess kids, the kids I, I play just, tournaments yeah. all year long. This I way. can understand. Well, I'm not saying, kind of pressure. I just saying that's if there was one critique that I would throw into this thing as far as my opinion about that, and you won't change tradition around here, it seems like. But I tell you this, that's got to be tough to do. That's tough to do. Now you think about Rock Falls if they maintain this lead, they've got to come back tonight, buddy, on a team that's. Uh, Hard to beat, let alone the rush that they're getting. Mm -hmm. That's my point. Tie that on the floor. Johnson, 20 points today. Really got going. Hit a big number. 12 of those in the second half. And not only that, Mike, when you blow out a team like Jabot did, you get a little added rest. Half the fourth right. quarter, they didn't play. That's right. But that's what it's all about. As they say, here's Jedediah one more time. 21, game high. Nope, Horn has 22. Doesn't matter right now as far as Rock Falls is concerned. I like that Jedediah. Uh, underneath, Alfredson. Good ball moment, good play, a little layup action. Gets a couple. Here comes Vance. Shovels it across to Martin, and again, Tom Sigel right in front, just 
Jets said, take it easy. You didn't yeah. need it. Right, you didn't make a good choice in that I, particular drive. I was watching Siegel. Th he didn't jump up and start yelling at the kid. You know, he knew he made a mistake. He said, all right, look, we got a, you know, an 11-point lead. You know what you did wrong. Yeah. Of course, he's a senior, and I think there's an understanding. You can be a little more aggressive than you need to be at times, but I'd rather have that than a guy not trying at all. Believe me. Well, we see nothing but kids trying. Absolutely. It's been beautiful, and, and both games we've done outstanding. To get a down low to Corn. There's a the gimme. Oh, no. Well, he did it the hard way, and this goal time team. they call count a basket on a goaltender. Goaltender. It was not the easiest way to get a basket, but they'll count it. Right. You can see grab the net, that being Martin. Yeah, I heard Martin. Well, I don't know what everybody's confused about. It's either goaltending or one, two. Oh, yeah, there he is. Yeah. And it, yeah, and that's what that's what the official right now. I mean, uh, you know, Terry Elms, the official right in front of us talking to Tom Sigel. And I love the way he calls the game. I've watched him before, and I watched him last year. He he's on top of things. Subs in. Enoch and Swanson for Plano. Jensen sits down. So does Alfredson. Well, Plano's green the dream. It appears they're going to have to wake up to real life here, but it's been a great run for the Reapers. Well, I tell you, a couple of mistakes. All right, then. That's, I just say a couple of mistakes. We can change that around. Fouls on Flores, and that we have is his fifth. Mm. So Roberto Flores finishes his high school career, well, except for the consolation game, with uh, three points today. Let's go to Mitch Robinson. Thanks a lot. We're here with Perry Brawley of the Jesse White Tumblers. And Perry, I, I was telling you, I've seen you numerous times. Every time, you never fail to bring the house down. Where do you get your kids? Well, most of the kids come from the inner city uh, areas in Chicago. And what we do is we have an audition every September and every January. The kids have to bring their grades. If they don't maintain a C average, they can't be a part of this program. But if they don't have a C average, what Mr. White does is he provides tutors for the kids. Wonderful. Uh, I got to tell you, wonderful job. Great watching you. Congratulations. Thank You'll be here at 5 o'clock tonight Thank upstairs. Thank you. Good to you. Mike, back to you. All right, Mitch. Ryan Vance now. Three of three from the line. Does not Mitch look like he can be a tumbler? He's taken a few tumbles. I, if you ever watch him, the pride and joy from Rockford, Illinois. That's him. And Livingston, New Jersey, by the way. He's an East Coaster, too. Oh, yeah. Pretty soon they'll be asking him if he wants to matter or send. You hang around long enough, and here's the ball kick. Yes. Mitch and Yvonne Simmons, our sideline reporters, doing a wonderful job today, as always. And our intrepid producer directors, Doug Yalaki, Jim Corno Jr., working through two very tough days, and we appreciate the work of them and all the crew as Brad Korn shoots from the seat of his pants. And Vance is fouled by McCoy with a minute four to go. We're just playing the string out now, it seems. Yeah, Mr. Korn's got a nice future down there at Southern. And Southern's very lucky, I think, to have uh, such a talented ball player. Ryan McCoy. Ryan Foul on him. Here is Vance again. 81% from the line. Why even bother to say that? There you go, Mike. Why do I do this? Uh, that's because uh, it brings interest to the game. Uh-huh. <laughs> By the way, an outstanding job in the March of Dimes. Oh, yeah, that's you. a lot of fun. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Well, thank, thank you all for That's your a fun help. time of the year for us. So. And there's a steal by Vance. And one. Well, he baited that shot right there. That's what it's called. A little talent to go along with, uh, hey, come get me. Let me put my little stamp of approval about winning this game at this point. And that's, a, that's what this is. Watch this. Is First of all, great steal to begin with. Up, well, looking at me, and I'll take the ball. He's showing such quickness. All right, come on, come on, come on, hit me, hit me. All right, little body English. Swanson the foul. After the three-point play. Ryan Vance. I got to commend uh, Swanson for not uh, getting a little more aggressive on that because he could have. Down he goes. Nice pass. A rim record for Corn. But that was Swanson with an outstanding pass on his 
buttocks as he fell down and slid halfway down the court. Thank Beautiful you. Play. Forrest Van Leer. <laughs> 45.2 to go. Timeout on the floor taken by Plano. Here's Swanson. Oh, there you go. Beautiful. That's a heck of a pass. That's no. keeping your composure. That's no doubt uh, about that. And I think he kept his composure in that foul that Vance that baited him. Come on, foul me. Because uh, most people under these conditions losing like that might have taken that a little to heart and put him into the third row. But he kept his cool, which is very nice. Outstanding game. That's another good game. They had some runs on both teams. Plano made a little run in it, took a one point lead in the third period. Then a 7 0 run by Rock Falls turned that around. Luis O'Conn coming in for Plano. Number 32. There's the home run ball to Vance. Swanson goes from again. Vance has got wide receiver speed, you know. I mean, he really, he's got some uh, football skills to go along with that, and quickness. Here comes the future for Rock Falls. Oh, good job. They all come out. All the starters do. Beautiful play display. Let some guys get some action. Let's get the names in from mom and dad at home. Scott Hayden, number 21. Andrew Keyshaw, number 34. Number 50, Jared Clarity. Matt Hardy, number 32. And number 14, Dusty Weaver. Dustin Weaver, a 6'2 junior guard. Well, I can tell you by the looks of the crowd that's here, I think all the parents are here. And no doubt. everybody that lives in Plano and the surrounding area. That's right. What a, I mean, look at the crowd that they have. Rock Falls, too. And the whole corner of this uh, in the oval shape here is just filled with green, green uh, shirts. Kyle Platt, number three. and. Tries to feed the ball into Paul Blythe, the 6'3 junior 200 pounder. And Jared Clarity, 6'7 junior center. There he is, commits the foul. Ricky Lacerra, number 50, is in. He comes out now. And there is Robert Moreno, a 5'9 junior guard. Should be an outstanding championship game tonight. It'll be Jabot against Rock Falls. Wonder who's going to handle Thomas. This is a great two. I don't think anyone handles uh, John Thomas. We're going to hold the rest of them. Firing up, Justin Weaver. <laughs> Underneath it will play this one out. Five seconds. Here comes Clack for Plano. At the horn. It'll look good if it goes. It doesn't. It doesn't go. And it's 64 to 50. Rock Falls moves to the finals. Behind 24 from Brian Vance, 21 from Jedediah Johnson. And tough defense that they had when they needed a, a game group from Plano. Let's check in with Mitch Robinson and Coach Tom Sigel. Thanks a lot, Mike. And Coach, uh, you wanted to be aggressive. You guys in the second half came out there. You got a nice run. And then once again, the three-point. You said you could knock them down if you got the chance. Well, it was huge because they went to the zone and uh, we hit some, which ended up being a little bit of a detriment to us because then we started realizing that we were open and kind of relied on that a little bit. But uh, we started attacking a little more and then we hit enough that they came out of it and went, man, and I thought that, that we were a little tentative when they made their run, and we had some big shots. And I know Jed and Brian each hit threes, and that seemed to loosen us up to get our run. Do you have a chance to even look ahead and, and scout your bow a little, or, or do you just play an instinct and do what you guys can do now? Well, we came down here trying to look at uh, a lot of the teams and see what they do, and we were able to see them a little bit, but I know that they've been playing really well. They've got a great team, and we've got to try to get off our feet. That may be the toughest thing that we do. You know, it's a tough decision. Do we walk through something or do we just try to let them rest? And uh, we've got to make that decision, yeah. All right, good luck tonight. Get some rest. You're in the state final, Chief. Yeah. All right, thanks. Congratulations. Mike, back to you. First trip in 41 years for Rock Falls. Norm and I were around. Not many of the other folks were. <laughs> and the cheerleaders, well, they certainly weren't. They're enjoying this one. 64 to 50, the Rockets from Rock Falls are in the state finals over Plano.
Well, things are calmed down a bit here as the semifinals are set. The finals will be the Rockets of Rock Falls against the Hawks of Waterloo Jabot. The Rockets beating the Reapers of Plano 64 to 50. Our Pepsi play and player of the game, the shooting of one Brian Vance, number three. There he is. No, he'll get it back from Jedediah Johnson, who had a pretty good game of his own. The threes, one of several. One, two, three, four, five, six three-pointers for the player of the game. Well, now we've got the Pepsi slam dunk competition. Ooh, take that. That's coming up here. It's part of March Madness, and take that. We're going to have four contestants, and they will be uh, crowned, uh, what, King Slam? King of the Hill. Oh, I guess King of the, well, no, that's the three-point shootout. Oh, man. Let's take a look at the statistics from the last game. And, uh, you know, they're for uh, figure filberts, but let's figure. Look at that shooting by Rock Falls, 57%. Wow. 10 out of 18 from three-point range, Norm, and they didn't do badly at the free-throw line either. Not at all. And when you shoot trays, uh, usually you usually don't get the free-throw line that often. But I think that's a high number for a uh, team that's shot a lot of uh, three-point shots. But nonetheless, good shooting on their part, and they kept the poise even after that run by Plano. But the big numbers, of course, 64 to 50, the final score. Let's check in with Mitch Robinson, who has the format of this dunk, slam dunk competition at his fingertips. Mitch. Thank you, Michael. And uh, from a guy who can't even get half inch off the floor, this is really ironic that I'm talking slam dunks. You've got six judges. You rate them on a scale of one to 10. Four guys, the king of the hill, the winner here comes back next week. And in the two-way championship at halftime gets to take on the champion of two-way. It's kind of a cool scene. You got everyone on the court waiting to watch this. Not a bad idea. I kind of like it. Back to you guys. All right, let's take a look. Uh, before, let's take a look at the floor. A lot of look at that. A lot of kids just enjoying that. Yeah. Take a little break. As you look at your leading scores, Brian Vance, 23. Jedediah Johnson, he had uh, 21. And uh, let's see. Four for four free throws for Jedediah. Five threes, five out of eight for him, and Vance four out of seven from three-point range. Uh, Brad Corn leading all scorers. Another outstanding game for him. He had 26, and there you see the fall off. Kevin Jensen uh, second with just nine. Oh, there were kids all over the floor. I thought it was nice that they would let them sit out there, and now they just cleared the floor. Oh, well, that was a nice touch. Yeah, we did it quietly. The kids just responded, but I thought it was a... Uh, yeah, that was... Uh, it was nice that they would sit on the floor. Do you and remember watch when we used to go to Madison Square Garden as kids? They would never let us sit on the floor, but they always had these uh, clinics before the big games, like the right. Holiday Festival, the right. NIT, and we'd sit right under the basket. Oh, like Oscar festival. Robinson or Don Nelson yeah. come in there and shoot. Great memories. Don Nelson as a bean pole. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Right. Nelly as a as a stick. Well, kid from Iowa. Yep. Yeah. Okay, this is Roosevelt Shigog from Moments, our first competitor. One. Mm, that was right. tough. It was a hard dunk. Wonder if you get any points for breaking backwards. Well. Oh. Any points for ball slipping out of your hand going real high to the ceiling? Well, that's why they got a 45 second yeah. clock. So uh, Roosevelt Shigog from Moments can load it up again. Oh. He's got some uh, pops. Yeah. I want to see one guy touch the clock. Oh, no. Okay. Jackie Jackson. Yeah. Oh, nice dunk, but it didn't go through. Okay. And that's the time for Roosevelt Shigog. He got two down in 45 seconds. And the judges will caucus, and they'll come up with a number. Next, we'll have... Uh, Lionel Miller, Franciscan. She got uh, 38 points. And here is Lionel Miller. Yeah. Well, he's got a uh, look on his face like, don't bother me. Ooh. Oh, man, he missed that. But that was like, oof, from the throwback. That one went back to Bloomington. I think. Nice hard dunk there. Yeah. That first one, though. I <laughs> that <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> I went over to Dixon. Get, get him friends over there. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll all yell together, Eureka! Yeah, home of uh, Ronald Reagan. Oh, no. Watch out. Hurt your back on that. Trying to left it. Ah. Mm. Losing confidence as he goes along here. 
Still got five seconds. Here's his last one. And make sure of that. Gotta get Mitch out there. Let him do it, Sam. Did I hear you say get Mitch out there? Yeah, get Mitch out there. Let him use the trampoline by the Jesse White tumblers <laughs> yeah. and do his twisted triple full gainer dunk. He gets 41 <laughs> points, so he is in first place. Lionel Miller. Uh, Norm, I'm going to do a triple Lindy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's you're the man. You're Les good. Norman from Lebanon High School. He is our third of the four competitors. I like him. You do? Oh, yes. Let's see, uh, by acclamation. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let's see what he can do. He's oh, oh, okay. I know Fields. this one. I know this one. The Rodney Field. Oh. oh. Uh, let's yeah. do it again. All right. Come on, Les Norman. He's the smallest one out there for the guys at Duncan. Yeah, but this is a great move. There yeah. you go. That one, it, maybe I'm predicting, but that was top dog right there. Who pulls out the blindfold? Oh, oh man. No. Do it again. Do it again. Time. I like this. I like this. I like it. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This Me. man's been rehearsing. Ah, this is creativity. Oh, my God. And quickness. Unless our last contestant can fly, yes. you just burnish that trophy right. and hand it right over there to Les. I hate to follow that act. No, no. Less, oh, man. much more. Yeah. He gets a 5-0. 5-0. All right, as we look at Jason Angel from Kiwani uh, Weathersfield High School. He's got, a, he got legs like I do. Bird legs, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, this has been an experience, Norm. It's always fun. This Absolutely. has just outdone everything. <laughs> One of the seven Norm Van Leers is here with us today, and we're just happy. Oh, man, you know how it is. Flashbacks from our visit to Cincinnati. What we had together. Yeah. It's nice done. Nicely done. Nice done. Okay. Still has lots of time. It might hurt a little bit right there. Come on with it. Come on. That's the quickness. We want more good. All right. Last chance right here. Okay. Good effort by Jason Angel of uh, Weathersfield High in Kiwani. And let's just check his score for the official uh, result. But let me tell you, he gets a 45 to finish second. But our winner, wow. There he is. Les Norman from Lebanon. That's. That's a firework, sure they should say, for the 4th of July. Yes, they should. But see, this one right here, this, well, bounce between the legs. That's very dangerous yeah, for me to do. Here's Mitch with our winner. Thanks a lot, Mike. Les Norman. And uh, Les, uh, we were calling it the Ronnie Fields. Uh, you were lighting up. You've been practicing. Yeah, before I came over, I had like a couple of days after basketball season to practice. You know, got my legs, got into the weight room, and just got my legs stronger so I can get up like I did. Let me tell you, you got to come back next week now, take on the two-way champ. You got any more surprises, something different for the judges? Yeah, I got to go back and practice. That's, that's all I can say right now. I don't have nothing to repertoire right now. As long as I get back in the form, get in the weight room, get my legs stronger, I'll be back able to compete again. Heck of a job, Les. We'll see you next week. Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Mike, Norm, he is the man, the slam dunk champ. Thank all you. right, congratulations yeah. to Les. Mitch, thank you. And that's the story from here for now. Don't forget, we'll be back. Fox Sports coverage. Fox Sports Chicago's coverage of America's original March Madness continues tonight at 6.30. Live with the boys' third place game followed by the championship final. It'll be Jibo of Waterloo taking on Rock Falls of Rock Falls. For Norm Van Leer, Yvonne Simmons, Mitch Robinson, and our crew and staff, I'm Mike Lederman saying so long from Carver Arena in Peoria. Boys' dual team wrestling coming up next. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of Fox Sports Chicago and Intersport Television. So long, everybody.